the topic of peace and anxiety. Um, anxiety has been a part of my life pretty much since I was born, as long as I can remember. Um, most kids, I guess, you have to give lots of reminders as far as like, you know, remember this is what we do during the tornado drill. Have a plan in case you're actors, you can get out, strange danger. And most kids, like, you know, it takes them a minute before they internalize those things and remember. But for me, those were just became lists of things to be afraid of, things to be wary of, reasons to be scared. And that list just got very long and there was always something in the back of my mind to be afraid of. And it built and grew over the years. Um, I became afraid of the symptoms themselves, of the, the racing thoughts, the shakiness, the disorientation. And there was always a fear that I would just never come back, that it would never stop, that that would be my reality forever. And I think things, it, it, was, it ebbed and flowed over the years. Some, some years, some days, some weeks were better or worse than others. Um, and then I think where it kind of reached a breaking point was between first year and second year of university. So actually a few months after I shared at Ashes to Rubies the first time, um, there was a span of two weeks where my parents were going to be out of the province and I was starting a new job and I was going to be home alone with my little brother and I wasn't prepared. Um, and somehow the thing in my mind was that I was afraid that I would panic or break down and there wouldn't be anyone there to calm me, to comfort me, to hold me because I had come to depend on those around me over the years to be, um, that there had to be people around me to make sure that I was okay. I wasn't comfortable being alone. And so the thought of all these hours at the end of the day that I didn't know how to fill and making sure that I and my little brother were okay was somehow just too much. And so eating was hard and sleeping was hard. Um, and there was just a constant feeling in my chest and the pit of my stomach that I couldn't shake. One, even, um, one night, I guess, I woke up at three in the morning and I could barely stay awake, but I also couldn't fall back asleep. And I felt panic and dread that just filled my entire body. And I thought for a moment that I had only been experiencing things that viscerally for a few days. And I understood that if for some people that was their entire existence, then I got why suicide seemed like a better option, which was a terrifying thought to me as well. So that just kind of added to the list of things that freaked me out. Um, and I don't think things were ever really addressed at that point. I know I had kind of tried to talk to God and to pray into the anxiety throughout the years, um, but somehow just never ended up working, never never healed at that point. And so I guess the summer ended and things were still a little bit shaky moving into the fall. Um, I, w I didn't like it being home alone in, in the evenings and I would always be planning all unscheduled time so that I didn't have to be alone and would be okay. And I think at that point I realized that as much as anxiety had been manageable for most of my life and had been just a part of me and another character trait, um, I figured it was time, time to get help. So went to counseling, great idea, would recommend. Um, and I think the means um, of kind of sorting through my thoughts that was the most helpful was kind of just like playing out the anxieties and just like walking through all of the what ifs. Just the first what if, there's the, oh no, I have an exam coming up, ah. And then the brain just stops, the ah. And then you just sit there, that sucks. But then you have to ask yourself the next question. It's like, okay, so what if this exam doesn't go well? It's like, okay, then I fail. And then what? And it's like, okay, and then my GPA goes down and then I don't get into the PhD program that I want to or whatever. And then I don't know what I'm gonna do with my life. And then whenever we get to that like rock bottom and I sit at it and I look at it and I'm like, okay. And in that situation, God will, and he is still my hope. And he is the one that I would trust in to give me a new plan for the future. And that he'd also be with me throughout the entire, entire process as well. And so that's one of the options that there'd be a rock bottom and I'd be like, okay, God's there. And the other option, if there's like, I don't know, something dangerous happening and I'm afraid that, I'd be afraid that I die, it's like, okay, cool, then I'll go to heaven. So those are the only two options. So when you kind of play those things out, then things are less scary. And so there was um, also through this counseling, I also came to be dealing with trauma and working through that, which um, was instrumental in healing from addiction. So I had also struggled with like pornography addiction for a while, which is I talked about last time. And I think in combination, I'm sure all these things are intertwined. Um, I also have found lasting healing from that as I healing from anxiety as well. And I think it was a few months 
um, into into therapy. I think it was in January of the year because it was at an intervarsity retreat. I remember sitting by myself and contemplating going and spending time with people. And then I decided that I just wanted to sit by myself in silence, which is something that I've never wanted to do before because I don't like solitude and I don't like silence. Yeah. That is something that has grown over over the last couple of years. I've enjoyed being by myself. I've enjoyed just sitting in God's presence and exhaling and just being. Um, and it's been it's been good. So I'm very grateful for those changes that have happened. Um, yeah. So this is something that I have been growing in and learning about. And it's just yeah, it just slowly moves in and replaces the anxiety. And there's no longer I guess, any thing to fear, because fear itself was the thing that was, I guess, hiding in the closet that, that I was afraid would jump out. Like after um, the summer where things got rough, it was, there was, it was always like in the back of my mind, like that can happen again and it can be worse and it might last forever this time. And so knowing that I knew what to do if the anxiety were to ever jump up again has just made it not. And I realized that there was a lot of barriers in my life because I'm like, oh, if I put myself in this situation, then I'll get anxious. If I put myself in this situation, I'll get anxious. So now there's a lot less that I'm afraid to do because I know that I'm able to cope and get through it. And regardless of what happens, like there is possibility for healing and hope. And so I'm very grateful for that. And um, at a retreat that I was on this past weekend, I guess virtual retreat, but we were sitting in silence, which again, is something that I now like to do. And the thought came to my mind that I now know peace more deeply than I know anxiety, which for me is something that I never would have thought would be true because anxiety was just a part of me. I thought it was who I was and something that I would never shake. And so, yeah, that's a beautiful thing. And I'm grateful to God that that is the reality these days that, yeah, I know peace more deeply than I know anxiety. Thank you.